Good afternoon guys, Sam from Alarm Tech here, here to bring you another video. Hello guys, here to bring you another video. Um, today we've got the video regarding wireless contacts, um, door contacts and shock sensors and uh, PIRs. So what we've got, we've got um, the panel in engineer mode at the moment. This is a Premier Elite 64W. Um, the panel LED is currently off. It will need to be off when you're learning your wireless detectors um, and it will need to stay off for at least 20 minutes and that is to allow the panel to establish a ricochet mesh. If you don't know what a ricochet mesh is, it's how the Texcom um, configure their wireless. So they talk to all the other sensors in a, in a spider web effect. So if one of them loses its connections to the panel, it can piggyback off of another detector. Um, as I said, that will take 20 minutes for the alarm to configure. If you don't let it do that, um, you may have a problem down the line with a supervision fault um, and it'll, it's just worth your time to spend this 20 minutes. So what we want to do, we want to add this wireless PIR into the system. Um, I have already put it in and I've deleted it again, which we'll go through this video as well. So what we want to do, we're going to go into our um, zone setup for installer mode and we just want to find our first available um, wireless zone. On these panels, the 64W, the first eight are on board, so we can't use those. And then the next ones will be on the wireless expander side of things. Um, these panels can have a lot of wireless detectors, so these are recommended for um, businesses, commercial and, and homes. Um, the reason why we recommend these is because of, it's got a large scalability where you can add a lot of detectors um, and it's relatively cheap. You can get one with a wired keypad such as this. Um, and that will be kit 0086 um, but you can also get a wireless keypad which I'm not too fond of um, so to add this detector we just want to press yes until we get to where it says learn on the top right so if we press this we can see we're going through the usual options and it says learn on the top right I said left but it's on the top right um, so at the moment it says it's free and that basically means that there's nothing in this detector if we press no, it will say learning with a countdown. If I just pop this battery in place, this detector will automatically power up and auto learn. Uh, with some of the wireless sensors, you'll need to sort out the learn pins, um, but it's quite straightforward. They, you have the manual for that. Um, and that PIR, this PIR is now in the system. I'll then cite this and um, put it into like, the corner of the, the lounge or the dining room, put the lid on, and as I said, I'd wait for 20 minutes um, until I'd finished from site. If you have other zones to add, you can then just press down to go to your next available zone and then learn this one and then cite it in, it, in its location. Um, just make sure that you write a note as to what zone corresponds to a location so you can complete your zone list. Um, once you've finished all of them, as I said, 20 minutes at the end, just that it all settle down, which uh, will give it enough time to establish its ricochet. So what you want to do, this is just a detector, it's a guard because it's going to be going to the lounge, but we'll go through changing that now as well. We want to add text before we forget, so we just press the cross button and it will be predictive. Um, it isn't very good, but it, it will guess quite good words sometimes, usual words. So if I want to type in living room, uh, there we go, we've got living space room. And there we go, we've added living room. Um, zero will do a space, and if you want to change it to predict um, not to be predictive, just press the cross button and we can see that bottom right change. ABC is so that it's like an old style phone, so if I press number two once an A will come up, press it twice, a B will come up, and the third time you'll loop around and then do small characters as well. And that's how you'd, you'd change it. Um, obviously, because this is just a spare detector, I'll leave this in, delete it later. If you want to delete anything, um, you can just delete the whole thing by pressing the man in the house, which is the second button up, um, and that will be fine. Uh, once you've done that, just press yes to confirm it, and then that will say whatever the zone text is across the bottom. Um, if you wanted to change it from a guard um, to a guard access, which would be your hallway, we'd press no on guard, and we'd get the little arrow on the bottom right. Press number four, and we'd get a guard access. If you've actually done the door contact, which is the first zone that you'd open when you were unsetting the alarm or final set of the alarm system, you'd press number one and that would be an entry exit. With this, this will be the terminator on how your alarm is going to be set. Um, when this door is opened, it will finish the timer and start the settle time 
and when it's opened it will start the entry time um, for you to unset the alarm. Um, what we do is after we've set the, the correct one, just press yes. If you don't want it in use, you can also press zero and it's also not in use. Um, if you get a problem out of hours um, and you don't want to visit, you can also just make it not use and then fix the problem the next day. Um, the best course of action will be to delete it, relearn it, wait the 20 minutes because it's don't be sorted or the installer didn't do it properly. Um, also change the battery. Um, they recommend it to be done every year or so. Um, and that will just make sure that you keep your false alarms low um, and just do your annual maintenance. Um, the standard options, we will go through in another, uh, another video regarding part setting. Um, that's all from today. If you've got any questions, please leave a comment below um, and drop this video a like.